Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to talk about vector derivatives, also known as the equation of Coriolis, as well as the angular velocity vector. Now, I know that doesn't sound like the most exciting thing in the world, but I urge you to stick with us because over the next series of lectures, the importance of the topics that we're going to discuss today are going to grow on you like a colony of E. coli. We're going to have this scenario arise when we are trying to analyze systems with two or more coordinate frames or reference frames, and one of them is rotating with respect to the other. In this scenario, how a vector changes depends on which perspective of which coordinate frame you're looking at. I think it's easiest to probably think about this using a concrete example, and since I'm an aerospace engineer, most of the examples that I like to look at involve aircraft. So why don't we start by looking at an aircraft uh, like this F-14 Tomcat here. Now, the unique thing about this F-14, um, I think if any of you guys have seen the movie Top Gun with Tom Cruise, you should be instantly familiar with this aircraft. And you probably have saw that what happens with this aircraft, it has a variable sweep mechanism here in the wings. So basically the wings here can change change uh, sweep angle during flight. This is actually kind of unique. There aren't too many aircraft that do this. Some other examples might include things like the F-111 Aardvark or the B-1 Lancer. Now, what we want to do here in this scenario is let's consider a point P, maybe on the, let's say, let's say the left wingtip of this aircraft. So I've got this little yellow dot maybe to help us visualize this point here. And again, let's label this here as point P. So this is what we're interested in, this point P. Now, in order to talk about a vector to this point P, we need to attach some sort of reference frame to this aircraft. This is typically called the body frame or FB. The way this thing works here is that we're going to have a coordinate frame that is usually has its origin at the center of mass of the aircraft. It has its x-axis, which I'm using as red, pointing out the nose of the aircraft. The y-axis, which is green, pointing out the right wing. And the z-axis, here in blue, making a right-handed coordinate system with this. So down through the floor here and um, you know what let me let me take the cockpit off so we can have access to the cockpit we're going to need that in a second and I'm going to try to just tape on this coordinate frame to the aircraft here okay so here's what we've got we've got our coordinate frame here whoops yep, that's one and I kind of got that tangled let's grab another tape here Okay, so now that we have this coordinate frame, let's call this coordinate frame the body frame like we discussed here, or we're gonna de denote this as FB here. So as soon as I tape this thing on in a semi-secure fashion here, what we're gonna wanna do here is label this coordinate frame as FB. So again, I'll grab myself a little piece of tape here and a sticker here to denote this frame here as FB. Okay, so now that we have FB here, we got its origin and we have the point P that we're interested in, we can start talking about a vector from the origin of frame FB to this point P here. So I'm gonna use this, uh, this little piece of orange string to sort of denote the vector here. So again, the, the end or the tip of the vector is gonna be here at the point P. So let me see, I'm kind of, running out of hands I sort of need an assistant I think <laughs> here but I think I can manage okay there we go that's taped on the tip and the origin of this is going to be at the uh, center of the coordinate system I, I, I can't really clip this on so this is gonna be close enough here I think it, everyone gets the picture here right so this orange line now is the vector from the origin of FB to point P why don't I call this we're gonna call this R P with respect to B. And in other words, how I get to P leaving from the origin of B here. So again, let me just tack this onto the, the, this little yellow string, which is supposed to denote that vector. So here we go. So we've got a couple of these things set up now, and we're in a good position to maybe start talking about other uh, reference frames. So why don't we consider now an observer that might be watching this aircraft fly around here. And this observer is going to be uh, like on the ground. So tell you what, let me put the aircraft down here. And what I'm gonna do here is try to, let's move this little thing here in so we can get a better view, okay? Because what I've got here is I would like to attach another reference frame to this. 
So this reference frame is going to be what we're going to call FR, or I, I guess that's unfortunately it's the, the nomenclature is not the best. It's the reference reference frame. Some people call this the inertial reference frame because it's attached to the ground. It's not rotating. Newton's laws hold in this frame here. We're actually going to have a, an extended discussion here on non-inertial and inertial reference frames when we take the discussion today and talk about velocity and acceleration in moving frames here. So that's coming up. So anyway, what we're doing here is let's go ahead and take this frame and again attach it and uh, again it doesn't really matter the orientation because all we're trying to do is just get another reference frame that we can use for discussions here okay so oops oh geez that's not really gonna stay too well let me let me get some more masking tape and see if I can make this a little bit more secure here for our discussions because we're gonna want to be moving the two of these frames with respect to each other here in a second so let me just tape this a little bit more here I apologize, my demos never seem to go as smoothly as I envision them in my head. Okay, all right, I think we're, we're getting there. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so here's our reference frame. Again, let's call this maybe FR here, right, for our reference frame. So maybe I'll just attach that somewhere near the origin where we can kind of, well, I guess that's kind of hard to see from the camera. Let me see if I can rotate this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got FR sitting there. And now that we have these two reference frames set up, we could even do something like saying... How are these two reference frames orient or, or located with respect to each other? So for example, we could have a vector from the origin of frame FR to the origin of frame FB here. So I'm gonna use this red rope here to sort of denote that. And again, I'm gonna probably have to tape this thing down. So give me a second here to drop some of this and tape this together here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on like such here. Okay, and then let me grab some more tape. Okay. And now we could attach this. Okay. So now this red line is going to denote, let's call this maybe R, B with respect to R. So in other words, how do we get to the origin of frame B from the origin of frame R? So that's what this red rope is supposed to signify here, right? Okay, great. I think we have almost all of our actors put together right now. The last thing we want to consider now in this scenario here is, again, we've got these two reference frames, but what would happen if one of these reference frames, namely the aircraft frame or the body frame, what if it was rotating with respect to the other frame? So in other words, let me see if I can grab this here. Let's say that this frame is rotating about some axis. I've got this, this gray stick to sort of to denote it. It could be moving in sort of any direction. Let's call this omega b with respect to r, right? It's the, it's the angular velocity vector of how the body frame is rotating with respect to the reference or, or inertial reference frame here. So again, I'm running out of hands here, but I think I can maybe just tack that on and here we go. So <laughs> here's my horribly uh, somewhat convoluted picture here at this point, but I think you get the point here, right? We have the reference frame, we have this body frame, and now we want to consider that this body frame is rotating about this angular velocity vector omega b with respect to r here okay so that's the picture that goes along with this whole scenario um i realize this is probably a little bit convoluted let me put down all of these props and let's redraw this scenario here on the board here so we can see all of these together in one spot in a, a little bit more clear fashion and then we can start asking some questions about how do things like uh like what about this vector rp with respect to b here right this yellow string that we put on from the center mass of the aircraft to the left wingtip how does that change uh, as one frame is rotating with respect to the other okay so let me pause the video put these things down and we'll draw some stuff on the board okay so let's draw these frames on the board here so uh, just for reference remember we said FR here we said this was going to be our reference frame and we were going to assume this would to be uh, inertial in other words, non-rotating is maybe the better way to think about this, rotating, okay? So what FR looked like here was, again, let's just draw ourselves a right-handed coordinate system. I don't know, maybe let's call this XR, uh, YR, 
uh, and then ZR here. So here was frame FR, right? Okay, so that was our uh, reference or non-inertial or earth frame or whatever you like to call it here. And then what we said is we said we also had a second frame. Maybe let's draw that in blue up here. Doesn't have to be aligned and it can be offset here. So maybe we've got a uh, X body, a Y body, and then uh, a Z body, right? So FB here was our body frame. And this is rotating, rotating with respect to FR, right? And we said the way that this thing was rotating, it was rotating about some um, angle here or some axis here that we were going to call omega B with respect to R here, right? So omega B with respect to R, this is our angular velocity vector. So it measures how FB rotates with respect to FR, right? Okay, and then we said that these two frames were offset by a uh, position vector. So the origin going from frame FR up to frame FB was what we called RB with respect to R here, okay? So RB with respect to R was our position vector of FB's origin with respect to FR origin. Sorry, I guess I didn't manage the white space too well there. Okay, and then uh, the thing of interest here was we said that there, let's consider another point P uh, somewhere on this, this, frame bo this body frame. I don't know, maybe I'll draw it out here. This is our point P. And then the last thing that we were interested in was this thing here, right? Which was our P with respect to B here. So the last part of our notation here is our P with respect to B. So this is position vector of P with respect to F body here, right? So again, this green line here was what we were trying to, to visualize with this yellow piece of string here, right, on the aircraft. And the red line on the board, again, is the red line here um, between these two coordinate frames here. So that's the picture that goes along with our scenario here, drawn in a little bit more uh, consistent fashion here now. So here's what we've got. So in this case, I'd like to consider uh, a very simple scenario here. So let's write this down here. So how about consider the following scenario. So in this scenario, what I want to consider is let's go ahead and say that RP with respect to B is fixed. So it's uh, P is not moving with respect to R. Uh, sorry, with respect to FB, with respect to the body frame here. So what that physically means here is, again, we come back to our aircraft example here, and this is the, the scenario where the variable sweep mechanism in the wing is not, act, uh, not active. So the aircraft is just, it can still be rotating here, so this point P might move, but it is not moving relative to the body frame, right? The, the, the left wing tip stays in the same position with respect to the aircraft body frame as we roll around, right? So um, that's the first scenario. And then let's say what happens if FB is rotating here? So let's assume what happens if FB is rotating with respect to FR? So in other words, let's assume in the case where omega B with respect to R is not equal to zero here, right? So what that means is the aircraft is maneuvering around, but the variable sweep mechanism is not active. It's just the wingtip is constant here, right? So in this situation, the big question that we would like to ask here is, in this context here, the question is, what um, is the time rate of change of RP with respect to B. Right? So uh, you can kind of think about this as is. We, we, have to th we have to think a little bit, right? Because now we're asking about how does a vector change with respect to time here, right? So what that boils down to here um, is 
Let's first maybe start with, we can define the derivative of a vector in, in much the same way we define the, de the derivative of a scalar here, right? So let's just go ahead and say that, okay, the time rate of change of a vector, p with respect to b here, at, um, at, at any given time, right? This, we might be able to define this here as how did the vector change? So let's look at what does this, whoops, what does this vector rp with respect to b look like at a small time delta t in the future minus where it used to be? rp with respect to b at time t all over delta t, right? And take the limit as delta t goes to zero, right? So really it's asking here, just like you, you would have a rise over a run. So how much did the vector change over a given time delta t divided by the, t uh, the rate delta, uh, by the uh, change in x or the change in independent variable delta t in this case here, take the limit as this goes to zero. So really this is kind of a, kind of an interesting question. It's, it's asking how did the vector change? Well, that actually depends on whose perspective you're asking. So again, what we're looking for right now here is, let's come back to our picture here, is, okay, we know where this RP with respect to B vector is. Again, it is this yellow line right here, right? That, this is the vector here, right? So now what's interesting about this is the question of how is it changing? actually depends on who you're asking. So for example, right, if, if you take the, um, like the pilot here, right? So I got, I got a little pilot here, right? If the pilot here who, who is attached to frame B, right? He's flying around and you ask him, you know, what, how is this green, this yellow line changing? What's the answer he's gonna give you? You know, and, and in fact, instead of having you need to, to try to, to think about this, let's let's snap on a camera to represent the, air, the, the pilot's point of view. Let me see if I can jam this thing in here. Okay, so I've just got a GoPro here, and let me see if I can angle this thing so it looks appropriate. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna hit, hit record on this, okay? And um, again, what we're, whoops, sorry. Uh, come on, hit record, go. Oh no, the camera turned off, hold on. For some reason it decided to die exactly when I wanted it to. Okay, so hit, let's go. Um, all right, okay, now camera's rolling. So now, again, the question here of, of how is this vector changing, it's basically we're asking the pilot, hey, guy that's attached to frame B, how is this yellow line moving if the aircraft is, is rolling around? So I'm gonna show you a little picture-in-picture -picture video of this here. Um, of the of the footage I'm acquiring from this GoPro as the aircraft maneuvers around. Remember, so oh, whoopsie, the camera just moved. Darn it. Whatever. Um, okay, omega b with respect to r, right? The angular velocity vector here, right? It is not zero. So this thing is turning at some speed here, right? And as you can see from the picture-in-picture -picture point of view, if you ask the pilot that question of what is the time rate of change of that vector, he's going to say zero, right? Because look at that picture-in-picture -picture view. It is not moving. That red that orange line is not changing as, as time goes forward, right? It's still in the same location. The pilot looks over his left shoulder and he says, hey, that vector is still there. It's in the exact same location, right? So let's keep the camera rolling here and but change our perspective here, right? What if you were to ask an observer who was sitting there in, oh crud, now this, this camera, no crud, the camera fell off. All right, I'm gonna have to reattach that when I, when I do the, uh, the other picture in picture. But again, let's come up with another observer here. So I got another observer. I got Starscream here from, un unfortunately, this is the Starscream from the uh, inferior Michael Bay version of the Transformer movies. I don't have G1 Transformers uh, Starscream, which would be worth a lot of money nowadays. So unfortunately, I don't have that. But let's attach him to our reference frame, which was FR, right? Which we still have sitting over here. So here, I got a second camera. Let's power this sucker on. Let's attach the camera to the frame FR, right? This was our, my non-rotating inertial frame here. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and hit record maybe. And I'm gonna jam our observer Starscream right here. And now we're gonna ask Starscream the same question of how is the vector changing? So now let's come over here. Let's grab our aircraft again, right? Our body frame and let me stick on our GoPro again so we can get both perspectives simultaneously here, 
right? Okay, is this thing still rolling? Yep, it's still rolling. Okay, so now, same thing here. Uh, let me see if I can get this angle a little bit better. Okay, so now, I'll show two picture-in-pictures. Again, the first picture-in-picture picture here, this is the pilot's perspective, right? We're asking him, how is the is that yellow line changing here as the aircraft rolls around in this body frame here? And again, the pilot says, oh, it's not changing. Our uh, DDT of RP with respect to B is zero. But Starscream, right? Let's do another picture in picture maybe right next to it so we can see both of these at the same time. And, and we ask the observer on the ground, we say, Starscream, how is that orange line, how is this orange uh, vector here, is it moving? He's gonna say, heck yeah, the thing is moving, right? Look at this thing, it's rolling all over the place here, right? So it's changing. So this is really interesting. This highlights a little bit of a discrepancy or uh, a deficiency in our notation here. So let me put all down all of our props here. I'll hit stop here. And I guess Starscream, you can hang out for the rest of the lecture. I guess that's, that's fine here. Um, so we have a small problem here, right? So the problem here is the, que the, the answer to this question changes depending on whose perspective you're asking here, right? To, depending on which reference frame you're, you're looking at here. So we have to adopt a little bit additional notation here because we can see that this is ambiguous the way that we just write this. So let's write that down here. So the, uh, the, the derivative of a vector changes depending on observer observer's perspective, right? And I guess Starscream, you're starting to get in the way. I might have to move you in a second, but let's see if we can get through this last bit here, right? So what we need to do here is if you have some vector, let's call it V, any vector here. And I wanna ask what's the time rate of change of this vector? We need to have some additional notation that says, Whose perspective are you talking about, like taking this derivative from here? So let's adopt the notation here that maybe this is the from an observer in frame Y here, right? So this is saying, what is the time rate of change of this vector from the perspective of an observer in frame Y? The other way that we're gonna write this here is, again, you might have your traditional V dot here, right? That says this is the time rate of change of a vector V, but again, we see that this is insufficient notation, right? It doesn't give you the full picture. So let's Let's adopt a left superscript to denote what perspective is that vector being taken, uh, that vector derivative being taken from. So maybe we, it, it would behoove us to write this down here. So this is basically asking derivative or denoting the derivative of V from F Y perspective. Okay. And let me see if that's actually, uh, yeah, Starscream, you're in the way. We got to get you out of here. So, okay, let's move you and let's move this out of the way. I think we're, we're kind of done with it for the most part. So I think we can kind of get rid of it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go. So what we see here in this case specifically, so back to our example here, right? We see that um, our... P with respect to B, right? The time rate of change of this thing with respect to the body frame here. This, the other notation that we could use for this here is R dot P with respect to B, but taken from FB's perspective. We saw that this was zero here, right? But the DDT of RP with respect to B from the reference perspective, which another way that we could write that is RP with respect to B dot with respect to R, this is not equal to zero here, right? So this is interesting. We come up with two scenarios here. We, we probably need to figure out what is this one here, right? We're gonna end up taking derivatives from uh, inertial reference frame or non-rotating reference frames because a lot of times uh, Newton's laws are still gonna hold here. So we're really looking for this term right here. I know it's not zero, right? Starscream told us here that no, that vector is definitely changing here. So we need to come up with an expression here for this. So the goal now is we need to find the derivative of RP with respect to B, but from the inertial frame here, right? So 
that's what we're looking for right now. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna uh, and explore two different ways to get this. The first is using Goldstein's rotation of a vector equation. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to watch the previous video where we discussed this and we claim that it would be useful, this is exactly where it's gonna be useful here, right? So well, that's the first method we're gonna look at. And then the second method we're gonna look at is using uh, small angle approximations here as and small angle and instantaneous uh, change analysis. So let's go ahead, um, I'll pause the video, erase the board, and let's tackle the first method of trying to find an expression for this term here. Okay, so we've erased the board, but I'll keep this diagram up because I think this is pretty handy here. So again, what I'd like to do right now is let's look at the first method here. Method one here is going to use Goldstein's rotation of a vector formula here, right? Um, now, remember, the idea here was, if you think about this long enough, we need to find out what is the position vector of P with respect to B, a small time in the future here, right? That's what we're looking for. I want to see how did this vector change here, right? So coming back to our picture here, right? All we're talking about here is that I got the aircraft here. Right, I got the body frame here. And here's the vector, right? That's the yellow line that I'm asking about, right? And we said that this thing is rotating about some axis here, omega b with respect to r, right? And all I want to do is I want to look at rotating this a little bit around that axis. So I'm, tr I'm trying to keep this as square as I can, but you get the picture here, right? If you think about this long enough, this is exactly what Goldstein's rotation of a vector formula did, right? It said, if you start with a vector here, this yellow, this yellow line here, I think we call that vector U here, and you rotate it through some left-handed coordinate uh, rotation about this omega B with respect to R, you end up with a new vector, which we called V, which is really how is the vector change a small time later here, right? So this is a direct application of Goldstein's rotation of a vector formula here to this particular problem here, right? The, the geometry matches up exactly. So let's write that down and, and walk through a couple of steps here, right? So to refresh your memory, right? Goldstein's equ uh, uh, rotation of a vector formula here was this, right? So let's go ahead and apply Goldstein which I'm gonna repeat here for convenience, right? It said that, okay, so the new vector V here is you're gonna obtain this using this formula, right? One minus cosine of mu uh, times the inner product of U dotted with the axis of rotation N, right? Um, times N plus cosine of mu times U minus sine of mu times n crossed u here, right? And here in this case, u was the original vector. So in this case, right, for our purposes, this is our p with respect to b, right, at time t, right? The original location of that point here. Mu is a left-handed rotation, right? It's the magnitude of the rotation about an axis n here, right? So here's my axis of rotation. Right, and this was a unit vector. Right, and finally, V here is the uh, resultant vector that you get out of this trans uh, out of doing this rotation here. So, in the scenario, what we're talking about is R P with respect to B at time t plus delta t here. Right, that's what we're looking at. Sorry, I should have moved this a little bit more here. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me get this out of the way. That way, it'll won't we'll keep encroaching on our space while we're trying to do this. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, so all we got to do is we got to make a little bit of a change in notation here just to, to make everything be consistent here. So let's do a, a quick change of variables. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do here is instead of talking about left-handed rotations mu, let's talk about right-handed rotations phi here, right? So I want to make this substitution here. Um, uh, so I can deal with right-handed rotations instead of left-handed, right? Left-handed is just so backwards here. I think this makes it a little bit easier here. I'm also going to make a change in notation here. Um, I don't want to have to keep writing RP with respect to B, right? Everyone knows that this is the vector in question here, right, that I'm interested in. I'm just going to write this as A. <laughs> 
that's probably a lot simpler here. And then finally, this uh, this axis of rotation, again, it's just a unit vector here. Um, one of the textbooks that um, I like here and, and provides a lot of insight here is the Stevens and Lewis uh, uh, aircraft Control and Simulation 2nd Edition book here, and they use a notation of S hat here to denote the axis of rotation here in a unit vector sense. So let's just go ahead and do that here, right? So this is just to be uh, consistent with uh, Stevens and Lewis here, right? And this is just, I'm being lazy and don't want to have to keep writing RP with respect to B here, right? So with this change of variables in the context of our Goldstein equation, like we said earlier here, um, the resultant vector here V, right? This is just going to be, um, yeah, uh, well, I guess we can write this down. So V, it's really A plus um, some delta A. Right, it's how did the original RP with respect to B change a small time delta T later, or what is the small result in little delta T vector addition here that we get? So basically, this is the new location. Uh, U here was obviously just A was our original vector here. So all we got to do is make all of these substitutions into our Goldstein equation here, and maybe where can I do that? Maybe I'll do this up top here. Maybe we can do this here. Maybe. All right, like this here. So, okay, sub into Goldstein. Okay, so what you're going to end up with here again, V here we said was what? It's A plus delta A, right, is equal to, and then we just got to start plugging things in here, right? One minus cosine of, now instead of mu, I want to talk about minus phi here, right? So minus phi, right? This thing times inner product of U was going to be A here right? A, uh, the axis of rotation, which we called S hat here, uh, that inner product, then times S hat, um, plus cosine of minus phi times uh, A, right? Minus sine of minus phi uh, S hat crossed A, right? So it's the same thing. It's just Goldstein with this change of variables here, right? Okay. So um, let's see, let's go ahead and erase a bunch of this because I think we have all of this in place and we don't need this any longer. Okay, so now it's just a bunch of boring algebra at this point here. So, all right, this is pretty simple here. I think this turns into one minus cosine is, uh, uh, minus phi is the same thing as cosine of phi here, right? So we get this is cosine of phi uh, times inner product of A S hat times s hat, right, plus cosine of positive phi. Again, that didn't matter, times a, right? But now this turns into a plus sign of phi times s hat crossed a. Okay, so that's pretty reasonable. Now, remember, we're looking at taking the limits as delta t goes to zero, so that means this delta a is small. That means this phi is small here, right? So with small angle approximation or analysis, so small angle analysis, analysis, right? We know that cosine of phi is basically one, right? And let's do our normal substitution. Then the sine phi is basically phi here, right? Okay, so let's plug all that in here. So we get A plus delta A, right, is equal to, uh, d -d 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 -d. actually, yeah, a lot of this stuff goes away here, right? So this is one minus, so this whole, this whole term gets knocked out here, right? because this is one minus one that comes to zero, so th this whole term is gone. And then this is a one, so we end up with just what? We end up with A here plus phi times S hat crossed A. Right? Okay, all right, let's talk about this rotation angle phi here. So let's make a note here that the total rotation angle, the right-handed rotation angle that you get here, isn't this basically um, the rate of phi change times the delta t? So in other words, I could write this thing as phi dot times delta t, right? I think everyone would agree that's the same thing, right? I take the rate of change of the angle, multiply it by the time that I'm changing, that gives me the total angular change here. Okay, so great, let's, uh, let's plug this in here for phi here. So our expression becomes a plus delta a is equal to a plus phi dot delta t s hat crossed a, right? 
Okay, so I think the A's cancel here. Um, and then if I move the delta T to the other side, I end up with delta A over delta T, right, is equal to, uh, what do I end up with here? Uh, yeah, here, phi dot times S hat crossed A. Right? Okay, so uh, now, uh, remembering that this is uh, from the obs uh, from the perspective observer of an observer in FR, we see that this delta this this derivative here is really asking how does this vector change from the perspective of FR. So using our notation we had earlier, right, we can write this whole thing as a dot from the perspective of R, right, is uh, equal to um, phi dot s hat cross A. Right. Now, let's look at this. Um, at phi dot, right? That's a scalar. So I can distribute this into either one of these elements in the cross product, right? So I could write this thing as phi dot times s hat cross a, right? Let's look at this term here, phi dot uh, times s hat. So s hat, if you remember, is the unit vector in the direction of, of the axis of, of rotation, right? And if I multiply it by this sort of magnitude here, this is basically your angular um, velocity vector here, right? This whole term is what we were calling earlier here as omega b with respect to r here, right? Because again, what this describes, it's the axis of rotation, right? S hat and a magnitude, right? Is the length of this vector, right? Or phi dot is the magnitude here. So we end up with pretty much our, our, our formula that we're looking at here, or looking for here is let's, let's come over here and write this as a dot from the perspective of the reference frame here, it's basically omega b with respect to r crossed with the original vector here, right? Or using, um, uh, well, I'll tell you what, tell you what, let's not jump ahead of ourselves here, right? So this is pretty interesting. This basically tells us how is this vector a changing from the perspective of frame fr if that vector is rotating with, res uh, with respect to r given by this angular velocity vector here. So again, coming back to our example of the f4 14 here, right? You got the observer, which crud, I just, I just unfortunately moved Starscream out of the way, but I think you get the point, right? If, if, if there was an observer sitting on the ground looking at how does this thing, this vector change, this yellow line change as the frame FB is rotating, that's exactly what this, this gives us here, right? So the only thing to think about now is if you, if, you, if you look at this long enough, you come back to Goldstein, right? And you remember Goldstein sort of assumed that this yellow line was fixed with respect to the aircraft here, right? Now, what if that wasn't the case here, right? What if this thing was simultaneously rotating and also this yellow line was changing with respect to the aircraft? So in other words, maybe maybe this would be helpful if we clip back on our, our, our camera from the observer or from the, uh, from the body frames perspective here. So let me, let me see if I can get this thing working here and I'll, let me hit go. Okay, so now, what if the variable sweep mechanism was was in play here, right? So as this thing was, okay, so first, maybe, maybe the easiest thing to do is let's do when it's not in play, right? If it's not moving here, right, and the, and the, and the body frame is rotating here, the, the, the equation we came up with is perfectly valid. That gives us the exact right answer of how is this point P changing from the observer's point of view here on the ground here, right? However, now, what if um, this was changing, right? So now as I activate it here, even as the aircraft is rotating, now you ask the pilot here, is something changing? Is this yellow line changing? And they will definitely say yes, right? That yellow line is changing from their perspective here. So again, check out that picture in picture. You should be able to see right now, as I move this back and forth here, there's an additional vector change component that we are neglecting to take into account right now. So we have to modify, modify our equation a little bit because what you're seeing in the picture and picture perspective is if you think about this long enough, you're seeing how does this vector change from the perspective of the body frame, right? That's what this picture in picture image is showing you, right? So that's the vector component that we need to add onto the expression over there here, right? So let me go ahead and put this thing down. I'll stop the camera. Okay. And ooh, oh, Nelly, almost dropped the whole thing. Okay, so uh, let's write that down as soon as I can find my 
pen. Where did I set that thing down? Oh, here we go, okay? So right now, this expression here is only valid if a, uh, if the, if, if a is not changing with respect to FB here, right? If the variable sweep mechanism on the wing is inactive, right? But the second the pilot sits there and starts actuating that variable sweep mechanism, we need to add that vector component onto this. So let's rewrite this expression here, right? So this is A dot R is, the additional component here is, we also need to ask how is the vector changing with respect to uh, the body frame here, right? So A dot B, right? Plus, Omega B with respect to R crossed A, right? So again, left-hand side, this is how is that vector changing from the perspective of the reference or the earth frame or the, not, or the inertial frame? This term now is, you can think of it as the variable sweep mechanism, right? As that point P is changing with respect to the body frame, that's what this term captures here. And then this cross product between the angular velocity vector and the vector itself is capturing the, um, the, the, uh, the change due to the fact that the frames are rotating here, right? So this is, is, um, is typically, instead of an A, you'll usually see this with, with a V here. So maybe let's write this in the more common uh, terminology that you're gonna see. You're gonna see this as V dot R is equal to V dot B plus omega B with respect to R crossed V here, right? And we better box this up here because this is the equation of Coriolis. Or at least this is what's <laughs> what Blake Lock here. Blake Lock, there's a 1965 textbook that he wrote here. I think it's um, well here. I've got it right here. Again, this is one of these other fun books that I had to go digging through the uh, the university library to find, and it's it's another one of these fun ones which which don't have any pictures on the cover. So again, you know this thing is serious. This is automatic control of aircraft and missiles here. So this is that Blake Lock 1965 uh, reference here, and I can actually give you the page number if you're terribly interested in digging it up yourself here. Right, page 296 here. Right. This is what he refers to as the equation of Coriolis here, and it is incredibly powerful. We're going to use this a lot as we start deriving expressions for a velocity and acceleration in moving frames. So again, just to make sure we understand what this is, right? Um, v. This is the vector in question, right? That's what I want to know. Here's my vector. I want to know how is that vector changing from the perspective of an observer on the ground or in a inertial non-rotating reference frame. Well, in order to get that, I have to take this component here, this cross product tells me how is that vector changing purely due to the fact that the two frames are rotating with respect to one another. That's what this cross product term captures. And then I have to add on to the component of there's a potential for that vector to be changing with respect to the body frame itself. So again, that is the variable sweep wing mechanism in action on our, on our F-14 example here, right? So again, this is um, the equation of Coriolis, very, very powerful. In fact, it's so powerful, maybe what we should do is take another uh, look at another method of how we can, can arrive at this exact same result here. So let me pause the camera, erase some of the scribbles on the board, and we'll, we'll look at deriving this, this in another fashion as well. Okay, so let's get to that same result using another approach here. So let's look at how about method two here, which is using small angle analysis. Okay, so the way we're gonna start with this is let's look at the vector in question here. Again, this is V here, uh, just some vector here, but let's express this in the body frame here, right? And that way we can write this here as U, V, W here, right? So if you need a little bit of a refresher on expressing vectors in a particular frame, please check out this video here where we discussed um, how to express a vector in different frames and discuss a little bit about what that superscript to the right notation meant. Again, so that meant uh, picking a vector frame in which we want to express or write down these vector components here, right? So here we go. So we've got U, V, W. So here, U, V, and W here, right? These are the components of the vector V expressed in frame B along the X, B, Y, B, Z, B axis here. So maybe we should just make that explicitly here, uh, clear here, right? So this is component along X, uh, B. Uh, I guess we can call it X hat for a unit vector if we, if we want here. So component along Y 
y hat b and then component along z hat b, right? Okay, and again, all of these are unit vectors here. So x hat b, this is just going to be 1, 0, 0. y hat b, this is going to be 0, 1, 0. And z hat b are gonna, is going to be 0, 0, 1. Right? They're just the unit vectors here, right? Okay, so now, again, the question that we want to ask here is, what is the time rate of change here, right, of the vector here? So here's the vector in question here. It just happens to be expressed in frame B, but I want to know how does this thing change from the perspective of frame R here, right? So this is what I'm looking for here, right? So uh, we can just write this thing out if we want. So this is DDT with respect to R of VB. It's right here, right? So we said that this is UVW expressed in B, right? So the other way we could write this three element vector here, right, is, uh, again, let's go DDT with respect to R here of, this is component U in the X hat B direction, right, plus scalar component V in the Y hat B direction, plus scalar component W in the Z hat B direction here, right? Okay, so now I just need to distribute this, uh, this derivative operator here through uh, all of these. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let, let, let's, let's, let's do one more step here, right? So this is now DDT with respect to R of this first element, right? U times X hat B, right? Plus DDT with respect to R of V times Y hat B, plus DDT with respect to R of W times Z hat B. Okay, now we need to ask ourselves here, the, the components can be changing and these unit vectors are actually changing here, right? Because again, uh, I really think this, this aircraft is super helpful, right? X hat B, that's the red line. Y hat B, that's the green line. And Z hat B, that's this blue line on the bottom. And as you can clearly see, as this thing rotates here, uh, th all those vectors are changing, right? They're, they're changing directions here, right? So both of those terms are changing. So we actually need to apply the product rule here to each one of these terms here. So to write that out explicitly here, let's, let's do one more step here, right? So this is, um, let's do the first term, DDT with respect to R of U times X hat B plus U times D DT with respect to R of X hat B. Right, that's this first term here, right? So this thing is that one, right? And then I gotta do it for these other terms as well, right? Plus, let, let's just write plus similar, right? I think you get the point here. I do, let me collect all of these ones with the, with the scalar. Um, well, actually, you know what? Tell you what, tell you what. Let's, 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 let's write it out. Let's, let's write this out because I think this will be a little bit easier to see. Okay, plus DDT with respect to R of V times Y hat B plus V times DDT with respect to R of Y hat B, plus finally one, one term down here, DDT with respect to R of W times Z hat B, plus W times DDT with respect to R of Z hat B. Right, okay, great. Great, great, great. Okay, so let's examine each of these terms in, in, in turn here. So let's first start with these terms here where if you look at this, these are just derivatives of scalars here, right? So maybe we'll come back to the top here. All right? So for example, let's look at D, D, T with respect to R of U. Right? If you remember, what was U? U was just the scalar component of the velocity here along the x hat b direction here, right? So this is the derivative of a scalar, so the, it, it doesn't change with respect to time, right? It's not a vector, it's just a scalar. So this is the same thing as just ddt with respect to U. I can drop this sub r notation because uh, the derivative doesn't matter here, right? Why don't I just call that U dot here, right? Okay, and obviously we're gonna keep the, the understanding that this is the component along x hat b, right? And the same thing for those other terms, right? So ddt with respect to r of v, I can just drop this sub r notation, and let's just call this thing v dot, and this is the component along y hat b, right? And same thing for the last one, ddt with respect to r of w, 
right? I drop the notation because I don't need it for scalars here. Right? Okay. So I tell you what, why don't I just stack up all three of these, right? Since it's clearly it's just a vector again here, right? So combine all of these here, and I could write this thing as basically u dot v dot w dot here, right? And this is expressed in the body frame here, right? But if you think about this long enough, since these are components along the x hat b, and we're asking how do these change along the body frame, this is really how does the vector v change from the perspective of the body frame, and it happens to be expressed in the body frame as well here, right? So the sum of all those three terms basically come, is our term v dot with respect to b expressed in the body frame here, right? So let's, let's simplify this expression now here. So that whole thing is going to simplify down to, okay, again, the left-hand side here of what we were looking for, this is uh, ddt with respect to r of v here, right? This is v dot b with respect to b here, right? Plus, now all these other terms I need to take into account the ones that are not underlined in red here, right? So I need to take into account plus um, u times ddt with respect to r of x hat b, plus v times ddt with respect to r of y hat b, uh, plus w times ddt with respect to r uh, z hat b. Right? That's what we need to look at, okay? So, we need to examine all of these terms underlined in blue now, right? Is just this, I, I just want to look at this term where it's just a derivative. So, not the, not the, the u, the v, or the w that's multiplied in front, but I want to look at just these terms here, basically these derivative terms here, okay? And I think we can actually get a picture here of what these look like, or an understanding of what these look like if we just draw a picture, right? So, let's examine this, the, maybe, uh, yeah, for example, these first one here. So I want to look at what is this term DDT with respect to R of X hat B. Okay, what does that look like? Okay, so again, I think it's helpful to draw a picture here. So let's draw maybe a simple 2D case here, right? So example here with a, a 2D case. So in this case, I want to look at omega B with respect to R is just having a component along the X axis here. So all we're doing here is these two frames are aligned. They're just rotating with respect to one another about one axis. So the picture becomes very simple here. So the picture I can draw is, let's draw the body frame here first. So here's x hat body. Here's y hat body. And coming out of the page is z hat body, right? So that's the body frame here, right? Now, since we have a rotation that's only in the z axis, right, the Z reference frame is like such. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 I screwed this up. These should, I should have started with a reference frame. It makes a little bit more sense here. Sorry. These are reference, right? Or the non-rotate. And now what I want to do is I want to rotate about Z hat R. So Z hat R and Z hat B, both these two axes are aligned because I only have rotation about one axis. So all we're doing is we're rotating this reference frame a little bit. So the body frame is just going to look a little bit like this. Right? So here's x hat body here, right? And here's y hat body. Right? Okay? So the body frame used to be aligned with the reference frame, but now it's aligned like such, right? So the, the angular velocity vector omega b with respect to r is actually, it's just coming out of the page just like this, right? So omega b with respect to r is coming out of the page. So you just get this little rotation here, right? So now the question is, where is this term how did the, the how did this x hat b axis change with respect to r? Well, if you look at it here, the the, bo the the body frame axis used to be aligned with x r. Now it's up here, so the change is actually right here, right? So this right here is actually d d t of x hat b from the perspective of frame r here, right? So that's where it's located right there. Same thing. We can ask ourselves what's the time rate of change of the y hat b axis from the perspective of frame r. Right? Well, here it is. It used to be pointing straight up. Now it's rotated a slight bit. So right here, in this direction, that is DDT with respect to R of Y hat B. 
And the last term here is the z1. In this case, it didn't change at all, right? In this case, we know it's zero because they're, they're still aligned, so we didn't see any change here, right? So in the instantaneous limit here, you see that actually the change of the x axis, it's actually in the y <laughs> reference direction here. So in other words, what I could write here is in the instantaneous limit, this thing, right, has a change in the y direction here of magnitude. The magnitude here would be what? It's, it's, it's the rotation rate omega z, right, times the length of the, 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 the axis here, right? Something like this. And we know that the norm of this here, this is just one, right? This is a unit vector in the body direction. So really, this thing can just be written as zero omega z, zero, right? Okay, similarly, let's come look here at the y one, or how did the, the, the y change, the y body direction? It's, it's right here, right? So you see the way it changed was actually in the negative xr direction here, right? So in other words, I could write this thing here as negative omega z times magnitude of x hat y, or sorry, y hat body. Sorry, this is y hat body. Right, and then zero, zero. Or, again, since y hat body, this is a unit vector, this is just minus omega z, zero, zero. Finally, our last one here, actually, you know, tell you what, the, technically this is not just a single zero, it should be zero, 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 right? There's no change in that unit vector here, right? Now, maybe let me erase this picture because I want a little bit more room here. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe let me move let me move this this omega b with respect to r down here. So if you remember, omega b with respect to r in this case was zero zero omega z. Right? This, 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 that's the magnitude in the z axis here. If you look at this long enough, this can be rewritten actually using a cross product here, right? So this term right here, in order to get zero omega z zero here, this is actually omega b with respect to r crossed with one zero zero, right? Or you could write this as omega b with respect to r crossed with x hat b. Right? Similarly for this, this is now omega b with respect to r crossed with 0, 1, 0 here, or omega b with respect to r crossed with y hat b. Right? And finally the last one, yeah, this is also the same thing, uh, you would get omega b with respect to r crossed with z hat b. Okay? So this is the relationship we're looking for, I, I guess it shucks, there's a... <laughs> There's a lot here in between, right? We we're trying to get, here's how this, this is describing how this unit vector, this, this x hat b, right? The unit vector in the x body direction here. How does it change with respect to r as the frames are rotating? Well, it's just the angular velocity vector crossed with the unit vector here, right? And the nice thing about this is we looked at a two dimensional case where omega z was just, or omega b with respect to r only had a z component. This formula will generalize to a, uh, a, a full omega b with respect to r. So we end up with a relationship, maybe I'll just I'll spend time and I'll rewrite this over here. So this is DDT with respect to R of X hat B, right? And this is DDT with respect to R of Y hat B. And this is DDT with respect to R of Z hat B, right? So these are the expressions we're looking for here, right? So here's here and here, right? those three equations. So now what I can do is let's plug these three into these three blue underlined expressions to, to see where we end up with, right? So, um, shucks, ran out of room. Tell you what, let's, let's keep this in the back of our head. Let's erase everything below so we can continue on. Okay. All right, so we end up with, okay, let's rewrite this, v dot b, b plus u, whoops, that's a u, plus u times, okay, this thing right here, we said this is um, omega b with respect to r crossed with x hat b, right? 
plus V times, we just showed that this here is omega B with respect to R crossed with Y hat B, right? And then plus W times omega B with respect to R crossed with Z hat B. Okay, okay, great. Let's go ahead and um, remember that again, these are scalars here, multiplied to this cross product here. So I would like to use the property here that again, if you had a scalar alpha times uh, U crossed V, right? This is the same thing as alpha U crossed with v, with v, right? So let's distribute these scalars in here. So what we could end up with here is we'd end up with V dot BB plus U times omega. Um, no, 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 sorry, 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 excuse me. I want it actually, I want uh, You could also distribute this alpha to the other side, right? So this is also equal to U cross alpha V. That's, that's what I want to do actually. I want to move this U to over here, right? And this V to over here and this W to over here. So I want this to look like omega B with respect to R crossed U times x hat b plus omega b with respect to r crossed with y uh whoops v times y hat b plus omega b with respect to r crossed with w z hat b maybe we should put parentheses around these to make this a little bit easier to see Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and use another cross product uh, identity here, right? So if you remember here, if I have a um, U crossed V plus a uh, U crossed W, right? This is the same thing as U crossed with the term V plus W. So you can see I can apply that here once and then I'll do it a second time with, with the result in here. So I'll basically spam this rule twice and I can rewrite this line here as V dot BB, all right? Plus omega B with respect to R crossed with U X hat B plus V Y hat B plus W Z hat B. Right? Okay, let's just rewrite this as a vector here, right? Here's scalar times unit vector in the x direction, scalar times unit vector in the y direction, plus scalar times unit vector in the z direction. So that whole thing in parentheses, right, can be rewritten here as u, v, w, and this is all expressed in the body frame v, b here, right? If you remember, this is what we had in the beginning, right? This was our vector expressed in the body frame here. So we end up with pretty much, uh, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mad. We just ran out of space on the whiteboard, but let's, 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 let's write it one more over here. So this is now uh, v dot b, b on uh, there, plus omega b with respect to r, crossed with V, B here, right? And great, at this point, um, we can drop this kind of the, the expressing B here, this, this, this right superscript B. Remember, all that did was say, which frame are we expressing this vector expression in? We can take it off without any um, consequence here and just generalize this. So again, the left-hand side, if you see over here, this was just V dot R, right? That's what the left-hand side of this was. And here's the right-hand side. So I'll tell you what, let's, let's rewrite this. I guess here, heck, let's re rewrite it over here. Get our final expression here, which was V dot R is equal to, we had V dot from the perspective of B plus omega B with respect to R crossed V, right? Which is the same equation of Coriolis that we ended up with earlier here, right? So just another way uh, uh, to skin this same cat here, right? We saw that both the results end up with the same thing, which is our equation of Coriolis, which is gonna be very helpful, okay? All right, so um, with that, uh, again, let me let me pause the video, uh, erase some of the board, and I would like to take a little bit of a closer look at this omega b with respect to r term. All right, so let's take a few minutes to talk about some properties of the angular velocity vector. 
And in this case, let's call this omega against B with respect to A. So, you know, earlier A was our reference frame, but really we can talk about any two frames A and B here, right? So let's write our equation of Coriolis from A's perspective, right? So this was like this, right? Omega B with respect to A cross V here, right? So this was from A's perspective, right? We can also write this from B's perspective, right? So I says, here's how the velocity V changes. If I was looking from B, that's how the, the vector changes from with respect to A plus how A is rotating with respect to B crossed with V here, right? So now, why don't I go ahead and let's substitute this into here, right? Okay, so if I do that, here we go. Here's V, uh, v dot A is equal to, all right, so instead of V dot B, I want this entire expression, right? So V dot a plus omega A with respect to B crossed V plus omega B with respect to A crossed V, right? Okay, great, so these cancel out here. And uh, maybe let's put these in parentheses. That might be easier to see what's going on here. Now, I can change the order of the um, these two vectors and all that does is it pops out a minus sign here, right? So I think I can write this as zero is equal to um, negative V crossed omega A with respect to B minus V crossed omega B with respect to A, right? And again, since this is a minus sign on the other side, I guess it doesn't matter. I can multiply both sides by a negative one. That's totally fine. And now let's just uh, pull out the V um, on, on, the, on the left here. So what we end up here is this is V crossed with omega A with respect to B plus omega B with respect to A. This has got to equal zero, okay? Now, we see in order for this to be true for any arbitrary vector V here, this better be equal to zero, right? This has to be equal to zero. So we end up with omega A with respect to B plus omega B with respect to A had better equal zero, or omega A with respect to B equals negative omega B with respect to A, right? So here's one property, and this is pretty, uh, pretty much an expected result here, right? This is sort of like a relative motion result here, right? If frame A is rotating with respect to frame B, that looks like the negative of how frame B is rotating with respect to frame A here. So again, this is a pretty uh, pretty standard result here, which hopefully isn't surprising at all, all right? Okay, uh, let's do something else. What else can we look at? Let's keep going here, all right. So that was one result. Um, let's go ahead and write our equation of Coriolis again here, right? So here's V dot A. Uh, is equal to V dot B plus omega B with respect to A crossed with V here, right? And again, we recall that this is valid for any vector V here. What if we choose V to be omega B with respect to A? Right? Because this is a valid vector. I should be able to understand how does it change from both uh, perspectives here. So let's just substitute this in for our expression here. So we end up with, okay, the left-hand side becomes omega b with respect to a dot a, right, is equal to omega b with respect to a from b plus omega b with respect to a crossed with omega b with respect to a. Right? Um, B, A, B, A, yeah. Yeah, great, okay. So um, this right here, uh, I think we see this is the, the same vector cross with itself here. So this is a big fat zero, right? So we end up with this interesting result here, right? That omega B with respect to A from how, it, how the velocity, angular velocity vector changes from frame's A perspective, it's actually the same as how it changes from frame B's perspective here, 
right? So this is kind of an interesting result here in the sense that the derivative of the angular velocity vector is the same in either frame here, right? So I guess if you want to think about it, it's like the angular acceleration is the same depending on what, it doesn't matter which frame you're looking at here, right? So um, tell you what, look, maybe what we can do here is let's write down a couple of these results here. Uh, now some other interesting properties of the angular acceleration, or excuse me, the angular velocity vector here. So some interesting properties here. So um, the first thing to notice here, right, is we said that it's this unique vector which describes um, uh, the, uh, the, the rotation of um, one frame to the other here, right? So this is a unique um, vector that relates kind of the derivatives of other vectors taken from one frame to another. So it relates the derivatives of a vector taken in two different frames. And we saw that the glue that held those two together were basically that equation of Coriolis that we derived here, right? Okay, the second interesting property of this angular velocity vector here is we saw that um, it has this relative sort of uh, motion property here, right? So minus omega b with respect to a. So this is the first thing we looked at, right? So again, this is sort of like a relative motion idea. Okay, um, the other thing that's interesting, we didn't show here on the board, but you can prove this yourself here, is that it's uh, additive over multiple frames. So in other words, if you are looking for how is frame C rotating with respect to frame A, and you knew how frame C was rotating with respect to some intermediate frame B, and you also knew how the intermediate frame B was rotating with respect to A, you can just add them together to get the uh, how A how C is rotating with respect to A here. So this is, let's just say it's additive over multiple frames. Now this is not necessarily true for angular acceleration, so uh, let's, let's keep this in mind that it works for angular velocity here, right? And then finally, the last thing we saw here, property four here, was that the uh, derivative of the angular velocity vector from either frame A or from frame B, it didn't matter, they were the same here, right? So this thing said that the derivative is the same uh, in either frame. Great. So, uh, all right, I think that got us where we needed to be here. Again, the whole purpose of this discussion here today here was to basically get to our equation of Coriolis, right? Which allowed us to relate how a vector V changes with respect to frame, like a, a reference frame, right? That was saying it's how the, the vector changes with respect to some body frame plus omega B with respect to R cross with the vector itself here, right? This was the major result of the discussion tonight here, right? Was trying to obtain this equation of Coriolis. And what we like to do now here is I hope you'll join me at our next video here where we are going to use this fact to derive equations of motion or of uh, basically equations of velocity and acceleration in rotating reference frames, which we're going to be able to later on use down the road when we would like to make equations of motion for a rigid body navigating through space. So with that being said, I hope to catch you at one of these future videos. If you liked what we discussed today, here, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me continue um, producing these videos here. And um, we'll have a lot of other videos discussing this type of behavior as well as simulation in the future. So I hope to see you at one of those future videos. Bye.